Hello, everybody. The purpose of this video is to have a little bit more discussion about limiting reagents and hopefully get us all in a place where we're pretty comfortable with what they are. And so the classic example is the sandwich. We have seven slices of bread, two slices of cheese. You start putting them together, you start making sandwiches, you're only going to get two sandwiches. You're going to run out of the cheese. That's your limiting reagent. Uh, and you're going to have extra bread. So the cheese is what runs out. It's what determines how many sandwiches that we can make. Um, and importantly, it also determines how much bread that we use. So it kind of determines everything about the sandwich making process. And real limiting reagents are the same way. So let's take a look at some real examples. Um, there should be a handout that goes along with this. And uh, I'm just going to walk these through with you. So uh, the first portion of this problem says, what is the limiting reagent if 133 grams of aluminum is reacted with 141 grams of oxygen? So as we always talk about in stoichiometry, there's a ratio here. It's a 4 to 3 ratio, but that ratio only works with moles. It does not work with grams. So to proceed any further, we're going to have to go ahead and just turn each one of these things into moles. And then that way we can utilize that ratio and figure out what the limiting reagent is. So the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the 133 grams of aluminum. So I made a little kind of a version of our train tracks here, this little table. So I'm going to pop that right there. And then I want to look up aluminum as molar mass. Just aluminum. Ignore the 4 for right now. And uh, remember, when we go to the periodic table, it's always 1 mole. So in this case, 1 mole of aluminum. And then aluminum the mass on the periodic table is 26.98. Excuse my voice. I'm a little stuffed up today. Uh, so we can do that calculation, and um, turns out that is 4.93 moles. So just uh, just a normal gram to mole conversion there. And again, this is going to allow us help to compare um, and actually figure out what the limiting equation is eventually and make that a little bit bigger. So we're going to do the same thing with the 141 grams of oxygen. And so I'm going to take my 141 grams, start with that part of the problem. Uh, this time, 1 mole O2. And then we look up oxygen's mass. Now we are going to double it because of the coefficient 2. So when you're looking at an, an equation, you know, just, just trust the subscripts. Use what the scrubs are, you know, do what the subscripts tell you to do. Uh, and then we don't use the coefficients when it comes to the masses. So we're just going to take oxygen's mass from the periodic table. We're going to double that. So that's 16 times 2. That's 32. And uh, 141 divided by 32. So it turns out that's 1 point... Uh, Sorry, it's 4.41. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. 4.41 moles oxygen. So when we're looking at this, um, what we need to consider is not only how many moles there are, but we need to consider the ratio as well. So in this case, it's a 4 to 3 ratio. So there's many ways to find the limiting reagent, but, but one little trick is that we could take the number of moles here that we have and divide by the coefficient. So I'm going to divide that one by 4, because that's the coefficient in front of aluminum. I'm going to divide that one by 3, and we're going to get an answer here. And, and this, this number, remember, that we got here, it's the only thing that it's going to be good for is just a limiting range of test. So in other words, we do this first one, and we get 1.23, and we do this next one, and we get 1.47. So this is just a trick, just a way to determine what the limiting region is. Whatever one of those two numbers is smaller is going to be limiting. What you uh, need to remember is those these numbers here, they don't really mean anything, and they should not be used necessarily in any part of the problem. Now, by coincidence, they might be the same, or it kind of might work out that way. But uh, So comparing these two things, I have determined, since 1.23 is smaller than 1.47, that this is my limiting region. Right here. So the aluminum is like the cheese in the example before. Uh, what's going to happen is this reaction is going to run and run and run. The aluminum is going to run out. The reaction is going to stop. There's still going to be oxygen left over, and then we're going to have some of the aluminum oxide. So, in fact, the next question is asking us well, what mass of aluminum oxide are we going to make when we do this? So, there's several ways to get there, and uh, I think, though, the way that is the least chance of making mistakes would be to go ahead and start back with the grams. And yes, there's other things that you could do, but let's just start back with the grams and do a, just a normal gram-to-gram stoichiometry problem. And the purpose of this whole 
beginning part is to just uh, realize that out of these two numbers, the one that I need to pick is the aluminum, because that's going to be my limiting reagent. And really, for right now, I could just completely ignore the oxygen. So, got to do a normal gram to gram thing. Uh, start with 133 grams of aluminum. First step is the same. One mole of aluminum is uh, 26.90 grams. And so, so from there, now we're in moles of aluminum. So after you turn to moles, the next step is always the mole ratio. And we're comparing these two things. We're comparing the aluminum oxide and the aluminum. Uh, the ratio is 4 to 2. So since I have aluminum on top, it's going to be on the bottom of the next one. And the aluminum oxide is going to be on top. So just following the what goes up must come down rule. Remember the periodic table, it's always one mole. Um, and then in the middle part, when we're doing the mole ratio, we're just looking at the coefficients. Uh, last step, okay, we got moles of aluminum on top. It's going to be in the bottom of the next one. It's going to be one mole of Al2O3. And then on top, what I'm going to find is I'm going to add up the mass of two aluminums and three oxygens, and you add that all together. Um, notice I'm ignoring the four, the two here. Whenever you're using the periodic table to add up masses, you never use these coefficients. Um, it is 101.96. Um, from here, it's just a matter of doing this calculation and arriving at an answer. So we get 251 grams. So that's nothing different than we did, you know, kind of all along in stoichiometry. It's the same idea. Uh, the first part of the question was really just to get us to uh, pick the right value to use. So the whole, this whole first thing was just to help us realize that I should be using the aluminum and not the oxygen. So the last question here tends to be the ones that uh, trip people up the most. So again, think about this conceptually. Initially, we got some oxygen, we got some aluminum, this chemical reaction starts happening, the aluminum is going away and away and away, and then eventually it's gone, and then we've, we've, we've got some of this, which we just calculated, we've got uh, 251 grams of it, and then we're going to have some of this too. And it is saying, specifically, how much are you going to have? Now, I can think of a, a ton of ways to do this, but um, let's, let's, let's think about Let's think about focusing on, on one way in particular to do it. Sort of be consistent, and again, start back with the grams of our limiting reagent. Really, every stoichiometry problem really should start with your limiting reagent. Um, and yeah, we could do some things that would shortcut this a little bit, or some different approaches. There's, there's a million ways. What I'm going to do is, so instead of finding aluminum oxide, like I did this problem, I'm going to start off with the same way, except find um, oxygen instead. So we're going to kind of point my stoichiometry towards, towards oxygen. So it's, it's really asking me to find out about oxygen. It doesn't say what is the mass of oxygen because that would give away the answer to what is the limiting reagent, right? So it can't, it can't phrase it like what is the mass of oxygen because that would give away the answer to A. Uh, so it's, it's saying this to avoid giving away the answer to A in the end. But the excess reagent is oxygen. It's saying find out about oxygen. So I'm going to start off the same way I did the previous problem. I'm going to go 133 grams. I'm going to change it to moles because we always do that first in stoichiometry when we have grams. And we're going to get 26. Nine, eight, same thing. Now, uh, what might change is the ratio. So let's check the ratio. Oh, and remember, always attach what you're talking about to the mole unit, which I didn't do here. Okay. So the ratio is uh, 4 to 3 in this case when I'm comparing oxygen to aluminum. So since I have aluminum on top, the 4 moles AO is going to go on the bottom, and the 3 moles O2 is going to go on the top. So in this middle step, we're always dealing with the coefficients, which we have up there. And then lastly, so I got a mole of oxygen on top, it's going to go on the bottom. When we're on the periodic table, which we're doing here, it's always going to be one mole. Mass of oxygen, as we saw earlier, is 32 grams. 
So I'm going to do this little calculation, and instead of accounting, uh, counting, calculating aluminum oxide, it's going to calculate grams of oxygen instead. So we just got to get to an answer here, and uh, turns out, uh, round it to the wood spot here. Well, it's it's about 118 grams. Put one eight. Now it's tempting to say, okay, that's the answer. I'm done, but not quite. Because that is the amount of oxygen that this reaction is going to use up. It is the amount that it's going to consume as the reaction happened. Think back to our uh, sandwich example here that we were talking about earlier. If you start, start with two slices of bread, you are going to use up twice that many slices for as the reaction continues. But that's not what the question is saying. The question is saying how much is left over. You've got to do a subtraction. You got to do four minus, uh, you got to do seven minus the four that you're going to use, and you're going to have three left over. So, yes, this is the amount that the reaction is going to use, but the problem says that we have 141 grams of oxygen. And if, if we're kind of understanding what's going on, this should make sense. What we're saying is we have extra oxygen. We do have extra oxygen. The reaction only requires 118 grams. We have 141 grams. We have more than we need. And again, that's exactly what we're saying when we're saying a reaction is excess. A reactant is excess. So we just go ahead and subtract those two values, and so we would have 23 grams of oxygen left over. So that oxygen is going to sit there and not do anything, because remember, the aluminum has gone, so there's nothing more for it to react with, and it's just going to sit there. And i got 23 extra grams of it. So there is uh, another problem there. Um, I'd like the video to you to pause the video at this time and take a look at that second problem. It's it's very similar to this one. It's very similar in the pattern and the way that it's going to work. Of course, different stuff, different ratios and amounts and so on. But the thought process is going to be just the same. So give that one a try, and then uh, after you've taken a look at it, then uh, I'll show the answers, or we can take a look at the answers. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. I'm not going to go through it in quite as much detail, but uh, the first step is to change these both the moles, which I have done. Uh, use that mass from the periodic table, and then our little limiting range of trick is we're going to divide by the coefficient and see which one is smaller. So it turns out that the copper chloride is a little bit smaller. So that's my limiting range there. Um, from here, uh, for both of the next two problems, now that I know that this is my limiting region, uh, that's what I'm going to start with. So, you know, there's a variety of approaches that can be taken, but like I said, um, I think for most people, the, the one that's going to give the fewest chances to make mistakes is just always go back and start with the grams. And in the case of the first one, uh, this problem right here, it's asking me about aluminum chloride. So start with the grams of my limiting reagent, change it to moles. Um, it's mass from the periodic table. Ratio is 2 to 3, comparing those two things. And then the mass of the uh, aluminum chloride up there. There should be ALCL. Sorry. ALCL. Um, and so we're going to make 66.78 grams. Uh, sig fig wise, I was given 4 in the problem, so I'm given 4 here. Not a huge deal, but technically we should probably have 4 sig figs in this problem. So for the mass of excess, um, again, we're always going to in a, a million ways to find mass of excess, but uh, one way to do it would be just to go back again, always start with the grams of a living reagent, if, if that's what you're given, is grams. And I'm going to go through again and just, the first part's the same, but instead of finding um, aluminum chloride, I'm just going to find the other reactant aluminum. The ratio happens to be the same for these two things. So this middle step is similar. What's different though is the mass of aluminum is quite a bit different, of course, than the mass of aluminum chloride. And so we get 13.51. And remember, that's not the answer, that's the amount that the problem is going to use. So then we'd have to do that subtract that little uh, subtraction step there. And then um, so what the amount that's going to be left over is going to be one. And so again, it should make sense. Hopefully, uh, this is the amount the reaction is going to use. We're saying the aluminum is excess. The problem is saying you originally had 15 grams. We only need 13.51 grams to make the reaction happen. So we do have extra aluminum, and specifically, we have um, I'm just following the subtraction rules here, which is digit past the decimal, which is why uh, we have three sig figs there, but not a huge deal with the sig figs. Anywhere around 1.49, 1 1.50, you know, whatever. I'm happy with that. Um, so thanks for watching, and we'll continue to work with this, but 
hopefully that that helped at least a little bit and uh, we'll continue to work and talk about it thank you